What are the best songs from Psalm 3? I'm Daniel Mount, joined today by my co-host, Pastor Chad Berry, and we'll answer that question on today's episode of the Expository Songs Podcast. We've each picked five songs, and we haven't compared notes. Pastor Chad, what's your number five song? Yeah, um, so putting coming in at number five, I have a song by Pete Crockett called Lord, I Have So Many Foes. Um, I put this song at number five and not a little higher in the list, mainly because the at first recording, it I can't tell if he's using like an auto tune or a reverberation. There's some type of tech going on in the rec- in the vocal recording that almost makes it sound unsingable, um, but it's really not. The more you listen to the melody, it's it's very singable. Uh, it is it has got more of a. Uh, a, a Scottish folksy feel to it. Um, it's off the album that says Psalms for all folk. So, I mean, that probably makes sense why, um, but it's a very good hymn. And, and really once you get past the tech side, very singable. Um, but I put it, I put it a little lower on the list simply for that reason. That is one of my runners up. I, I definitely, that was one of my top eight. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I definitely concluded that. And again, I had some questions about the singability, although you got a little deeper than I did in an- analyzing it. Uh, so at number five, I actually have a song that's more of a, a, an illusion or a thematic tie. And that's the old hymn, Now the Light Has Gone Away by Francis Ridley Havergal. Uh, and this song has a thematic tie to verse five, which says, I lay down and slept. I awoke for the Lord sustained me. There aren't that many amazing expository songs from this psalm. In a psalm where we had a lot of amazing expository songs, I probably wouldn't put a thematic tie in my top five. But given that there are only two or three that I think are just amazing expository songs, I think it makes sense to include uh, a a thematic tie here. And it's an old hymn text, uh, but I will say there's a, a melody and arrangement by the, I believe it's a Lutheran group, Koine, uh, which is a strong and reasonably current contemporary setting. Nice. Nice. Uh, number four, I had a uh, shield for me by Jay Stocker from the scripture lullabies. Mm-hmm. Um, and what stuck out to me about this song was it was a little more exegetical. There was a little bit more explanatory because what I've no- what I noticed and actually what, what I've noticed in every episode so far is there are a lot of arrangements where it's just the words of the psalm set to music. Now Mm -hmm. we can't approve upon the scriptures, right? And so I it I shy back from making any statement of like just quoting the text because we know it's the word that does the work. So um but I appreciated the explanatory side of this little song. And actually one of the things that I liked most about it was the fact that it was a lullaby. When you think about verse five where it says, I lay down and slept, I woke again for the Lord sustained me and then when you think about the surrounding context of of God hearing our cry and delivering us and the salvation belongs to him it reminds me of the the old puritan quote that the the providence of God or the sovereignty of God is the soft pillow upon which the believer can lay their head there is a sense of peace and stillness that can come over us um cuz typically when i read psalm 3 i think very anthemic you know battle cry he's my shield and but then I, I liked kind of the artistic side of of shield for me and and what's one of the chief results of that for the believer peace and comfort yeah there's a place for both there's a place for scripture songs which are word for word set to music um and, and there's a place for songs which unfold the thought a little more mm-hmm. uh, by the same in the same sense that there's a place in a service for the reading of scripture word for word and that should be there in a good service and there's a place for preaching that unfolds it and causes you to bring out the implications because uh, due to our limits as humans and our, our fallibility we don't always understand the implications of every passage Mm -hmm. and so it helps us when there's songs and when there are sermons that bring out those implications for us Mm -hmm. at number four i have psalm 3 10,000 foes by brian suave it's a verse by verse psalm paraphrase the only one that's a 
verse by verse, I'll paraphrase on my top five list. I have another one in the retuning challenge. Um, I haven't been able to tell. I did some research. I couldn't tell for sure if this was a classic lyric which he retuned or if it's his original lyrics as well as his original melody. Either way, it's definitely in the tradition and within the style of the older psalm paraphrases. And I think it's the best of the paraphrases of this psalm I was able to come across. And it's neither especially fast nor especially slow. It's, you know, moderately fast and moderately energetic, which I think there's several different elements, as you said, that can be pulled out of the psalm musically. But I, I like having a moderately energetic setting in here as one of the settings. So that's actually my number three. Um, Go for it. And and so I'll just offer, I mean, all the same reasons that you just cited as to why I picked it. But yeah, exactly. A mo- it's a moderate tempo. Um, it would be a little bit more of a challenge congregationally in certain contexts. Like, mm-hmm. I think we could do it in our context, but it would be, it'd mm-hmm. be a little bit of a learning curve. It's definitely got much more of a contemporary feel to it. Um, but I, I love... His musicality, his musicality is really, really good. And then, and you're right. The, uh, it is definitely more in the paraphrase category and it's one of the better, it's one of the better paraphrase songs that are, that are out there. Um, and I really enjoyed this, just enjoyed this song. And if I remember right, this, this song is off the album. Even the dragons will, will praise him. I have any songs worth singing, but it might be on that one too. Is it? Okay. Um, that is his album though, right? That yes. even the dragons yes. will praise him, yeah. And uh, I, I did not know Brian Suave until doing. I think I had one of his songs in my list for Psalm Two, and um, I, I, did too. I have come to really, really enjoy his music. He's a very, very talented musician. I came across him in the oddest of ways years ago. There was a um, Twitter controversy where he said something that was against feminism and the feminists are getting worked up in, in tweeting about it mm. and i saw brian suave just as trending on twitter as a general trending thing and this is back in the days before elon musk so back in the days it was more liberal and it's what trended and i was just like huh who's this i clicked on it and i'm like so he's a christian and they're mad at him and he's a singer huh <laughs> and he has good songs Really? Okay. <laughs> this is interesting. <laughs> That's probably the weirdest way I ever came across a singer whose music is in the database now. Yeah. Uh, so that was next that was, week, my that was your number three. three. Yeah. So, so I guess I'm up. Yep. Okay. At number three, I just have a word for word scripture song. Uh, it's My Glory and the Lifter of My Head, written by May McAllister and recorded by Scripture and Song in 1972. I grew up singing this in church. Like, I, I knew this one growing up. And so I've known it basically all of my life, maybe all of my life. And it's a good way. It's it's simple, but it's a good way to memorize Psalm 3, 3, and 4. Mm-hmm. And for those of you who were in churches when I was young, many of you knew it too. Uh, churches who are really, um, who have a strong slant toward one of the current sounds, which are primarily praise and worship, no song Bethel, or modern hymns, Getty style, and go really strong in that direction, probably won't find it fits their style today. But those that do a truly blended mix, and when I say truly blended, I don't mean praise and worship plus an old hymn, an occasional old hymn, or modern hymns plus an occasional old hymn, but something that pulls from a variety of eras, including 70s, 80s, 90s. Uh, so the, those that do like a true blend of old and new songs would probably find that it works just as well congregationally now as it did then. Mm-hmm. Speaking of that time era, we're singing a Twilight Paris song on Sunday. Really? Which one? Uh, we will glorify. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, I'll give a plug to another podcast here. Andy Chrisman, who used to be part of For Him, has a, a Degrees of Andy, it's a four or five Degrees of Andy podcast, uh, where he interviews uh, different people who are involved in CCM in the 70s, 80s, and 90s every week. And he just had Twyla Paris on within the last two weeks. Oh, wow. Uh, for anybody who grew up knowing Twyla Paris' music like I did, Check it out. Um, just search for Andy Christman podcast, Twyla Paris. You should find it. Uh, she's largely retired. She's largely out of the public eye. Uh, so he actually like went to her home. They sat down in her living room or wherever and had a conversation in her house. That's very cool. relaxed. It was really cool to hear what she'd been up to the last 10, 15 years. Yeah, that's really cool. That's really cool. I think that puts me at number two, right? Yes. 
And so at number two, I've got, oh, Lord, my foes are multiplied. Um, there there are several melodies to this. The the one that I chose by Crown and Covenant is actually the same tune as Amazing Grace. Um, mm-hmm. And the reason why I picked that one is the, the words are fairly straightforward from the text. Um, I, I like the the parts arrangement that they do. Um, I have become, as I have gotten older, a real, I don't know if sucker is the right word, but I've become a real sucker for, uh, new lyrics to familiar tunes. Um, Mm -hmm. you know, and because it makes, it makes it easy to learn new songs. And as I listen to this song, you know, at first I'm like, you can't use the tune to amazing grace for anything else. That's like sacred. Mm -hmm. Um, but the more I listen to it, the tune is really fitting to the, the motif of the Psalm. Um, and so obviously, I mean, I think any context, no matter how contemporary or not, everybody knows at least the first verse to amazing grace. Mm -hmm. So if you know the first verse, you could very, very easily learn this song because it's set to such a familiar tune. Um, and that was the, the main reason why I chose it was because of how closely stuck to the text it is and how singable it is and how congregational it is. I, I considered that one. Um, the amazing, Ra- uh, the amazing grace melody was a bit of a challenge for me too. Cause I was like, there are some melodies that are so familiar that you almost, mm-hmm. it's, it's hard. When you have like your top 10 core songs. It's a little harder to reuse the melody of that one, and that was kind sure. of my hesitation there. Sure, it's it's one thing to reuse "Be Thou My Vision" or "Fairest Lord Jesus" or something that people know, mm-hmm. but isn't like one of the core ten songs that everybody loves the most. When you got one that's the melody to a number of people's favorite song, then it's just a little a little trickier sometimes. But sure. I, I totally get where you're coming from too, because yeah. everybody knows it. So that that's yep. definitely the plus. And number two, I have uh, one I hadn't been familiar with before doing the research for this. And that is a song called Lifter of My Head, Psalm 3 by James Block. Mm-hmm. Uh, Say La Music. Not not the CCM group, Say La, but SayLaMusic.org is his website. He wrote and recorded this and introduced it on a 2015 album. The lyrics aren't quite word for word, I think, but they stick pretty closely to the themes of verses 3 through 5. Uh, they're just really straightforward, connected to those themes. God being our shield, crying to him, he hears us laying down and sleeping, and He awake, we awaken, he sustains us. Uh, but it's the music that really led me to rank it this high. Uh, the melody just soars. And, and without being super, super hard to sing, it's a very soaring melody that builds well. And the instrumentation in his recorded version is really lush and well done. Mm-hmm. Um. So at number one, I have uh, Psalm 3 by, I think, performed by Hyssop and Snow. Okay. Um, and I, I chose that one. I actually didn't like it all that well the first hmm. time I listened to it. And because it opens, and I don't I don't know that it's actually in a minor key, mm-hmm. but it almost sounds like it's in a minor key. The opening verses have kind of this haunting feel to them. And then that gives, which kind of makes sense, because at first I was like, Psalm 3 shouldn't really be, you know, have this haunting feel to it, because, you know, it's this anthem of celebration that God is our shield and our deliverer. But then when you think about it, it, it that the melody eventually gives way to that more minor key feel, and it, it soars into um, into to more of an anthemic uh, melody. But that first line would be kind of haunting, you know, in Psalm one, mm-hmm. where he says, oh, Lord, how many are my foes? Many are rising against me. Many are saying of my soul, there is no salvation for him in, in God. There is that. But then that quickly gives way. So I really loved how uh, that was communicated with the musicality. The words are just pretty close to the text. I mean, they, they definitely take um, some explanatory liberties. For example, in the second verse, um, he says, I lay down, slept and woke again. The Lord is keeping me. I will not fear 10,000 men entrenched surrounding me. Arise, O Lord, save me, my God. You punish all my foes. You smite the face of wicked men. Their teeth you break with your, or their teeth, uh, their teeth break with your blows. Um, you know, so that imprecation 
line later on is they definitely take some more explanatory liberties but the the melody on this one i kind of what you said about the prior song it just really builds and really soars and it's very singable it's very much um it would be in your typical hymn style so very singable melody so uh, and that's neat and the one i have at number one is just very different in a lot of ways uh, except for the building part. And it's a song I have known for years. Um, and part of the reason I have it at number one is probably the last 15 plus years. If you say name a song from Psalm 3, this is the first one that comes to mind. So I definitely have that bias of having associated it with this psalm for a long time. And that's the song Thou, O Lord, by the Brooklyn Tabernacle Choir. It's an almost word-for-word -word setting of verses 1 through 4. Uh, written by Lisa Brunson, as I said, released by Brooklyn Tab. And Southern Gospel fans will also know it from a version recorded by the Tallies, or Tally Trio. And it's musically, it is just a stunning piece. It starts out so subdued, so, so gentle, but then just keeps building and building through one transposition after another. Uh, but then after one particular transition, the instruments just drop out, and the choir breaks out into arpeggiated chords. And now, I know that not everybody who listens will know music theory, know what that term means. What that means in this case, it can be different parts in different cases, but in this case, that means the sopranos start singing, then the altos come in, then the tenors, and then the music just kicks back into the big crescendo. Uh, it's just a glorious arrangement. Uh, most congregations probably would not do this congregationally. With all the transpositions and the arpeggiated chords. Now, you could take out the transitions, you could do that, but a lot of the appeal of the song is just how it builds and builds through the transitions, through the arpeggiated chords. Uh, so it probably wouldn't be a congregational song for untrained singers. But there are still churches that have choirs. A lot of churches do. For those who do have choirs, this is not just an excellent choir piece. It's just one of my favorite choir pieces for church music that I've heard. So what do you have in the way of runners-up that we haven't already talked about? Um, yes, yeah, so I had three that I that I that I popped in as runners up. Um, the Shire Poets, I think that's how mm -hmm. it's pronounced. S H I Y R. Um, they they have a Psalm three piece and that I really really enjoyed. Uh, and the main reason why I put it in as a runner up was mainly because it's not particularly singable, um, but it builds. I mean, it mm -hmm. builds really great, and it's similar to what you just said about the piece performed by the Brooklyn Tabernacle Choir is it starts really subdued. And then eventually when you get to, you know, as they get to the end of chapter three, it just really, really soars. Um, <clears throat> I also had uh, Psalm. It's, it's funny that the title on the, on the list is Psalm one, actually Psalm three um, by the hope by hope chapel Greensboro. And, it's more of a passing reference to, to Psalm three in the opening verse. Um, the, but the refrain of this song, the, the chorus is actually built around that popular St. Patrick quote, Christ behind me and Christ beneath me, Christ beside me and Christ in front of me. Um, and I love that quote. I, I, I just love it. And when I heard that, it just kind of grabbed me. Um, and and it it does still connect to Psalm three very loosely and the idea of salvation belonging to the Lord and, and God being our deliverer and part of the way that He delivers us is is through His omnipresence and His ever that He's ever present with His people and so that one I, it, it wasn't particularly expository uh, also not particularly singable and depending on what context you're in if you're in more of a contemporary context it could definitely work. Um, I'll have a comment, comment on that one. So the actually thing is my editorial comment, yeah, if you will. Yeah. So on their streaming, or if they have CDs, CDs, it's just listed as Psalm 1. You know, uh -huh. I was listening through it for expository songs, and I was like, I can't hear a connection to Psalm 1 in here. But there's definite noticeable connections to Psalm 3. Mm -hmm. So I thought it would be a little weird to put it in the database as just Psalm 1 with no reference to Psalm 1. So yeah, the actual Psalm three is my editorial comment because yeah. I don't have a really good way. 
this is technical, but I haven't built a good way into the database to put in a correction to the title when I believe the title to be in error. Because sure. that's like maybe three songs out of 72,000 entries. You know, yeah, sure. There are there might be a couple others, but it's yeah. such an edge case that yeah. I didn't really build a good way to do it. So that's my editorial comment, to be yeah, perfectly sure. transparent. Yeah. Uh, and then the last one that I had by way of runners-up, and honestly, this is, just a sh- this is just because I wanted to give the group a shout-out. Um, it's... Uh, uh, my soul among the lions mm-hmm. has a has a piece on Psalm three. Um, their music is just so good. It I is. had never heard of them until I started do until we started this series <laughs> in the Psalms, and their stuff's just great. It's so good, and so that was really mainly just because I wanted to shout their name out for anybody listening to go look up my soul among the lions and listen to their stuff because it's fantastic. I definitely consider that one going through the process here too. I have two more runner-ups that we haven't already talked about. We already talked about the Pete Crockett one. That was one of your picks. Um, Jamie Soul's Lifter of My Head. I really enjoyed mm-hmm. that one. And there were actually two songs I grew up singing in church. Scripture songs from Psalm 3. Uh, the one I mentioned, the scripture and song one, My Glory and the Lifter of My Head. The other was uh, Thou Art a Shield for Me. Thou, O Lord, Art a Shield for Me. Uh, Integrity. Integrity is Susanna Music written by Kurt Henry. Uh, of the two I grew up singing, I like the other one better, but this is definitely one that I still know and still sing. I still associate with the passage. So uh, our last major segment of this series is our retuning challenge, which are lyrics that we think that we like the lyric, but it could really use a new melody. Um, do you have any picks under this I, category? Yeah, I had two. Um, okay. And, and what's interesting is the two that I picked – have been published in a lot of hymnals. Yeah. Um, so the first one was my God, how many are my fears by Isaac Watts? Um, the melody's out there. You can find it pretty easily. Mm-hmm. I just don't like it. <laughs> yeah, me either. Um, well, so, so full transparency here. That's my pick too. I have one okay. pick and yeah. that's it. So yep. go for your reasons and I'll, I'll, if I have anything else to add, I'll add mine. Yeah. I mean, the, the lyrics are, I mean, and, and you and I, we, I mean, we have talked and we could talk, we could do a whole, podcast series on why we love Isaac Watts and, <laughs> and he's such a great hymn writer. Um, but the, the words are so strong, um, in this particular, in this particular hot, in this particular hymn, but yeah, the, the, the melody is just really drudge and dull, uh, for the power of the lyrics. Uh, so that's, I'll leave, I'll leave my comments there. I'll let you take it from there. The only thing I was going to add is, Part of the reason I love this is, as we've talked about before with Watts, I'm sure, how good he is with interweaving New Testament themes into the Old Testament passage. And in particular, we see that in verses 7 and 8, where he goes all the way back to Genesis 3, you know, the 4 to 1 Corinthians uh, 15 and beyond, where he says, Arise, O Lord, fulfill your grace, it moves my heart to sing. My God will break the serpent's teeth, and death has lost its sting. Salvation is from you, O God, your arm alone will save. Your blessings will attend us there and reach beyond the grave. Now, with the right melody, that is a verse that churches will just sing out. It's just waiting for the right melody. And if that right melody comes, I can see churches just singing that wholeheartedly. That's really a big, a big finish to a really good hymn. Yeah, without a doubt. Uh, the other one that I picked for a retuning challenge, again, the melodies out there, I just mm-hmm. don't like it, um, is God, our shield by James Montgomery. Um, I considered that one. I only put, I only put down one, but if I'd done the second one, that would have been it. Yeah. And the lyrics, it's, it's only three verses. The lyrics are the tempter to my soul hath said, there is no hope in God for thee. Lord, I Lord lift thou up thy servant's head, my glory shield and solace be. Thus to the Lord I raised my cry, he heard me from his holy hill. At his command the waves rolled by, he beckoned, and the winds were still. I will not fear, though though armed throngs, compass my steps in all their wrath. Salvation to the Lord belongs, his presence guards his people's path. It's just a really crisp, clear, concise melody that just really drives at the main main themes of the psalm. Um but yeah, the melody just isn't good. <laughs> I don't know who wrote the melody. No offense to whoever wrote the melody. I'm sure they're dead now, but um, no offense to whoever wrote the melody. I just don't care for it. Yeah. I was saying, 
So as we wrap up, uh, thank you so much for taking the time to do this. And I believe you have a new book to mention. I do, yeah. Just released on Tuesday. Um, so it's called Ecclesiastes, uh, An Answer Key for Life's Big Questions. Um, the whole goal of the book is just to provide a robust answer to those major questions that either people either are asking or have asked. Who am I? How did I get here? Where does life come from? Where am I going? What's wrong with the world? Um, it's only 40 pages. It's really more like a booklet. Um, it's on Amazon. If you just search Chad Berry on Amazon, it should pop up in there somewhere. Uh, there's another Chad Berry that uh, has written a lot on slavery in uh, the Appalachian area. Not the same Chad Berry. <laughs> Um, but the last name spelled the same. So I'll, uh, I'll also send you a, a link to the Amazon page. If you want to link Thank it to the show notes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, so just check that out. And also, if you enjoyed this episode, please share it with a friend and subscribe to catch future episodes. You can also find past episodes and the free 72,000 entry expository songs, searchable database at expository songs.com. Thank you for listening.